Emil had never seen sand in his life. Marine pollution had left its mark on the little seaside village. The older locals had watched, first-hand, their once beautiful home turn into a dump site. The upside was, at least, that no one wanted this. When the sun rose, before anyone went to their day jobs, before those on the night shift went to bed, they gathered by the sea. Bags, grippers, sharp poking sticks and nets were all kept in beach huts on the shoreline. The queues to gather implements were long, but there was always enough. If anything broke, an effort was made to fix it, or craft a replacement. Of course, some people complained of being too tired to start so early, but a mill had never known anyone to forego their duty to the village. It was life, routine. He woke up every morning and had his breakfast, then went down to the beach to clean. If someone couldn't make it, being too elderly or too sick, they would do their best to encourage others and suggest new ways of dealing with the bags of litter. Emil, often on his crutches, did what he could when he could. Bit by bit, he could see the beach changing. Even though new litter was washed to the shore every day, the efforts of the people cleaned it up faster than it arrived, if only just. The large containers that sat along the edge of the beach, every day being filled with more litter, were starting to look more full than empty. The mill started his day as usual, comfortably fed and sitting on an upturned bucket, as he jabbed at dirty plastic bottles and decanted them into a bag. He didn't wander around like many of the others, but this worked fine for him. He might not cover a lot of area, but the little circle around him would get some serious cleaning. The wind had started to pick up, making plastic bags roll and bounce across the ground like animals running from hunters as the locals chased after them. The waves hit the shore a little harder, forcing the dirty lines of refuse further up the beach. Now and then, people would stop and eye the sea nervously. Looks like a storm starting to fester, Emil's grandmother observed, a voice low and ominous. We've had storms before, Emil replied. It can't be that bad. Oh, they can, dear. Just you watch. One like this comes around only once a few times in a lifetime, and I'd hoped I'd seen the last in mine. Just you wait. Emil looked out at the dark clouds on the horizon. He'd known storms to bear down on the village, drowning the roads and blowing the water at every building until it seeped through the gap beneath the doorways. The wind would pull at any nearby trees and make the roof creak. He couldn't imagine what it might be like if it got worse. They continued to pick at the litter, many continuing even as people made their way to work or home. Emil didn't have any classes, as he was usually homeschooled, so he continued to clean from his bucket. As long as there were adults about to keep an eye on him, he and the other kids were allowed to stay for as long as they wanted. Wind wailed from far over the ocean. Emil leaned forwards to stab a plastic cup when a sudden gust sent everything about him flying away, tumbling up the beach towards the houses. Another wind spun them around in a little cyclone and cast some bits back out into the sea. Something sharp blew past and caught Emil's arm, scraping a line along his skin. He huddled in on himself and headed off the beach as fast as he could, the wind chill stinging and making him more uncomfortable with every second. By the time he'd made it back home and opened the front door, the wind was shaking the waves, foam bubbling and frothing off the tips. Trees all down the street had started bending at alarming angles. The few people still out and about were nervously rushing indoors, clutching their clothes and keeping their head down. Windows trembled, the house frame creaked threateningly. As a mill shut the door, it resisted the wind trying to follow him inside. He tried to focus on his classes, finger following the words on his textbook, but the rain angrily refused to give him peace. It battled on the roof and drummed on the window. The rumble of thunder accompanied it like some parade turned a riot. The shadows that settled over the houses dissuaded him from going out and having a look. He shifted further from the window vanes, worried about the damp that had begun to soak through. It only got worse. That night the door rattled like people trying to break in. Water squeezed into the house through cracks and gaps, overfilling the pots laid out to catch it. The rest warped the ceiling into a bloated, dark, damp patch. The floor bubbled, barely able to hold itself to the ground. Emil clutched his grandmother and worried that the house itself would fly away and abandon them to the elements. 
With no other defences, they huddled together in the old armchair and whispered quiet prayers. When the morning came, the storm had passed, but taken with it the illusion of a consistent lifestyle that the residents of the village had come accustomed to. Emil's home had survived, but the others had lost roofs, or in some cases, an entire side of the building. Snapped branches and even whole trees were strewn across the streets, or buried in broken walls. Pieces of home lay scattered around the neighbourhoods. Most heartbreakingly, the litter containers had been upturned, and all the contents spilled out when the lids had been bashed and broken open. Decades of hard work had been lost in a moment, as tons of plastic, bundled and sticky, poured out across the beach and got blown into the debris of the village. It was as though no effort had been made at all, as though they'd simply just let it build up into a berg. The mess scorned them like some living beast smug at breaking from its cage. The clean-up began, but only within the boundaries of the village. People banded together to clear trees from the paths, while others set up scaffolds, patched up holes in the homes. Those less physically inclined used buckets to scrape up the deep puddles and toss it towards the beach until it was slowly absorbed into the ground. The elderly and sick were moved to homes that were still stable, checked for injury, bandaged and cleaned up. It would take many days until the village would feel safe and habitable again. Emil, at a loss, made his way to the beach. No cues lined the plastic carpeted sand. He took his bucket and stick and set himself down to start. Oh, darling, don't you bother, his grandmother said, gently, when she found him. We've all decided to leave it. But we do this every morning. Not this morning, dear. Maybe not tomorrow morning either, or the one after. He looked up at her, his bag already full. Then when? She sighed and kneeled behind him. Probably not for a long time. This is too much for one small village to fix. We did it before. It took many, many years. And now we may never get back to where we were. There are more important things for us to worry about right now. Emil shrugged. I will still do it. I can't pick up heavy things or fix anything, but I can do this. She sighed and squeezed his shoulder. Make sure not to hurt yourself. I won't. She left him to fill his bags. He wasn't sure exactly what motivated him to keep cleaning the sand, other than it was the same routine he'd done every day of his life. With no classes to go to while everyone fixed up the village, he sat and picked litter until his grandmother came to get him home for food. The next morning he went at it again, and the morning after. Time, as it always did, passed over the village. Many houses had been reassembled, and those not yet finished were stabilised. The road had been safely cleared for use, and the worst of the debris gathered into indoor storage containers. However, a mill had not made any visible dent on the immense pile of plastic litter. Despite how much he picked at it, plenty was already washing up in front of him, to the point that a small ridge had grown. The village rebuilt and returned to a sense of normality, but the shore only got worse. This didn't deter Emil, as he had not much else to do. As far as he was concerned, he was still filling bags. That made some difference. During their breaks, people had started to watch him work. Pieces of litter sometimes tumbled off the beach into the village, so the locals gathered it up and stuffed it into their own bags. As they picked up the litter, they steadily cleaned closer to the beach. Before anyone knew it, people had joined a mill by the sea once more, grippers at the ready. Obviously, it wasn't a smooth transition. Homes were still being repaired, and when the regular rainfall passed overhead, people had more concerns about water coming through than the litter at their doorstep. But there was a clear shifting towards their old routine. Perhaps because the scale of the disaster, or the amount of supplies that were in demand, but people began to look at the refuse in a new light. Some had started finding new uses for the larger sheets of plastic, weaving it together to make waterproof covers for their roofs, or bulky seals to go under their doors. Others had constructed windbreakers for the streets, nets to keep the trees from falling on houses, even bigger bags to keep the litter in. Within a week, some of the children had raincoats made of sweet wrappers. It would take many years before the clear golden sand shone under a warm sun, 
but the beach already looked better than it had the day the containers fell. Emil scooped his first discovery of sand into a jar and put it on the windowsill in his bedroom, motivating him even on his darkest days.